everyone and welcome back to my channel so as you can see my sister is in town again and we decided to give her another sew-in now in today's video i am doing the three-part sew-in which is a little less versatile than my five-part sew-in if you're someone who wants your hair to be a little bit fuller or you want to try to get more bundles in this is the perfect method for you because you can fit a lot more tracks on there so starting out we're going in and braiding her perimeter for the perimeter i always leave out just enough of hair so that she can cover the tracks and put it up in a ponytail if she wants to. Now it's time to section off the hair. So I'm splitting the hair in half. Uh, the back half is gonna be completely braided. The front half is not. I am going in now and parting out my parts that are gonna be out, which allows her to flip the hair. So of course she wants a middle part. So I leave out a portion of the middle. And then I go in and I part out another part on the side so she can wear her hair in both side parts and a middle part. The pieces that I'm braiding now toward her face, those are the pieces that are gonna be completely left out. And then the remaining hair is gonna be a part of her actual base. So again, the pieces that are left out are going to be the pieces that tracks are attached to. Now let's go in and actually braid down the foundation. If you guys don't know, I braided down quite a few foundations. Uh, the lady who I run her social media for, she asked me to kind of come in and braid down the foundations for people's wig install. And what I found after doing all that is that the straight backs are gonna be the flattest method. Now, I don't know what it is about the beehive that I just don't like, but I feel like when you have the beehive versus straight backs, when the hair tends to grow out, if your beehive is in the top portion of your head, it's gonna grow up, making it look more bulky versus the straight backs. As a result, I'm going in and corn rolling her hair straight back. Now with the first portion, I like to do one going around the perimeter and I connect it to that braid like so. Now with this braid, this braid is gonna be completely left out because we're gonna tack it down in that portion. With the remaining of the hair, we're just going in and doing straight backs, connecting the braid, straight backs, connecting the braid. When you get to the portion where the braids are gonna be right next to your center part, you wanna make sure those braids are as flat as possible because that's the portion where if it's even a little bit lumpy, when you go to do that center part, you're gonna see a hump. So make sure those braids are extremely flat and extremely small. Okay, so this is what the first half of the head is looking like. I'm gonna do the other half completely just like this. Now it's time to go in and tack the braids down. So I only have three extra braids that I have to tackle down, which is not that bad. That's why I told you this piece was to be left out because it fills in that little gap made by the braids like so. And now I'm just going in and honestly just tacking that braid down. One of the things that I hate the most is when people tackle their braids on top of a corn roll. That is my absolute pet peeve. I hate that. What I decide to do instead is use the gaps in the braids to tackle the braid down. That way when you go and lay tracks on it, it's a completely flat base instead of having all these lumps. Thank you. 
now that she's all braided up and everything's tacked down we're going in with the tracks and she bought me some reused hair that she got from aliexpress you guys know i love the raw hair i keep telling her she needs to go ahead and invest in some good quality raw hair but this hair worked out good nonetheless we're going in and we're tackling this down around her perimeter and then i'm just gonna fill in the hair in the middle so i'm not gonna bore you guys i'll be back once we're finished So everything is sewn in and now I'm going in and taking out the remaining of the hair that I had braided up which included the perimeter and then those two braids up front. So her hair is crinkly because it was blow dried so I'm going in and flat ironing all the pieces that are left out. One of the good reasons to get raw hair is because raw hair, especially when it's curly, is really textured. So if you're like me or my sister and you have textured hair, you want to get that kind of hair so that you're not always straightening your hair bone straight. Now, sometimes the bone straight look works and that's actually what people go for, but more for an everyday look. I recommend the raw hair. That way, when your hair hits humidity and the raw hair hits humidity, it's going to blend seamlessly. Okay, so we have everything straight and all the hair sewn in. Now the way to get your sew-in to blend seamlessly is to go in and cut layers in it. So that's what I'm doing now. I took her length up about three to four inches and then I'm gonna go in and cut layers. I like to do this because it blends your hair along with the hair extensions, especially when they're different lengths. Now I'm going in and just flat ironing it and putting a little bit of barrel curls in it. Nothing too crazy, just to style it. Okay, so this is what the hair looks like once it's finished. Put this aside. Does it? Yeah. So we decided to braid up her hair in two braids so she could sleep overnight. And this is what it looked like the next morning. So with this style, she can do the middle part, a side part, another side part. She can do an updo and she can do a half up, half down like so. All right, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Mm -hmm.